Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> hey, we're back today with my midday Q&A. That's right, this is the middle of the day where I try to answer people's questions to the stuff they've been asking. And one of the hot topics I seem to be asked about is that 1776 engine that we just put together last week. <laughs> That engine does not belong to me and will not be going in Eleanor, you know, despite me having helped work on it, that's that's not my engine. Uh, I did get asked that a couple times by a few different people, but no, that's not my engine. I actually have other plans for Eleanor, and there's a separate video as far as what engine I plan on putting in this car and what I plan to do with the engine in the future. So a lot more about that in another video. I'll put the video link to that down below in the video description underneath this video here. And uh, I'm trying to keep notes today, so that way I can be a little more organized as to what I do. Uh, anyway, the specs of that engine is, uh, I believe, and I'm going off the top of my head, 69 millimeter crankshaft, uh, 90, 90 and a half millimeter pistons, which gives you a displacement of 1776, roughly. I think it's 1775.3, but 1776 is what they call it. Uh, I think it's got an angled 120 cam, uh, big valve ported heads. Uh, 44 millimeter dual carburetor and um, I believe an inch and three eighth exhaust and that's roughly good for about 90 to 100 horsepower so in other words roughly double that of stock that car should be really good to go when he puts it in his Beetle it's going into a 1964 Beetle if you have been watching the channel for the last couple of years you probably saw where I put a stock engine in for his car and uh, he was quite happy with it for a couple of years He just wanted more power, so he upgraded to that uh, new one with his tax return that he got last year. He was working out a little more yesterday with a few other people. Uh, I didn't get to make it out there. I was unfortunately busy with my own projects, working on my own thing, which is uh, one of the things that we're going to discuss today also. But before we get to that, please like, comment, subscribe, pluck the little dingle belly you see down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. Up on the Facebook group page, there'll be a discussion on Eleanor, the 1776 engine, and maybe even the Doodle Bastard and or the fastback that's right we're gonna go have a look at the fastback as soon as we return from the intro so uh please watch through thanks so much Ooh. Okay, we're back, and what's behind me here is my 1968 Volkswagen Fastback named Ruby. And what we were doing here is we were installing a set of dual carburetor. <laughs> Dog's got to be barking as soon as I start recording. Yeah, I can look through the crack in the fence and I can see the f***er barking. And there's a lot of planes flying over because the wind happens to be blowing in the right direction. But anyways, I installed these uh, dual air filters you see here as well as this linkage because I was sick and tired of the old air cleaners uh, constantly getting sucked down on top of the carburetors and the linkage that I had was always coming out of sync. I don't know what the hell was wrong with it. There was this weird little tree in the middle that would push-pull and it was always messing up and always having consistent problems. So I decided to go with the hex bar because there's a lot less that can go wrong with it because the longest part of it is rather under torsion instead of under, you know, pull push, so it doesn't bend quite the same way. Now, the problem that you know, I had, and you notice that I have eliminated, is that I got the air filters inside of here. Uh, what I had to do is I had to raise the flange up in the trunk area here because it had been crushed, and it had been terribly crushed, probably by somebody way overloading this trunk. Now, I'm not done here yet. You probably noticed that a little bit is kind of wavy still. Uh, there's some places I had a little trouble with it coming up, and I'm still going to have to cut this piece out of here to, to finish that up. But the entire flange is... is nearly level. I have to put a straight edge on it and make sure that I get it about straight. But uh, we're looking at stock clearance now between the uh, carburetor top and the trunk. Now you might be asking, you know, how did I do it? And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be putting a video up on that because it was kind of precarious and very dangerous. And uh, I noticed that as my YouTube profile increases and more and more people are watching me, they can't be watching me doing something really stupid and really dangerous. So I took a little risk and took a little chance and, and I fixed this car, but I'm not going to give you the exact details on it. But we are going to talk about some of the ways that people told me, because everybody's always telling me, you know, they have a better way to do it. So I want to discuss some of the ideas that people had. And uh, one of the first ones that people had was, um, and this is, people said this more consistently than anything else, is 
put a floor jack under it and you know use use a piece of wood you know put that up underneath hit the trunk from the underside and you know just jack it up well that might be great if it was just a flat piece of sheet metal but it's not there's multiple layers and you see it it's actually um it's boxed <laughs> so even if I were to do that I would just crush the underside and the underside isn't where the problem is the top is what's what's bellied and the flange is what was crushed inwards so the flange needed to come up and then this area that's over here which now you notice is, is much more level than it was before it was very sloping down this way but it's much more level than it was um, I still need to pull the, the concave dent out of it, which I'm probably not going to bother. It's not hurting anything where it's at. It's clearing my carburetors. Everything's fine. I'm going to throw a carpet over it. You'll never see it anyway. Now, that was probably the most common thing that was told is, you know, put a floor jack under and jack it up. And I thought about doing that, but that probably wasn't going to be the best way to do it. And it also required the most work because I had to take the engine out in order to get to it. I was also told by a couple people that uh, maybe I should put a floor jack on top of the engine and start jacking up. But, you know, this is all sheet metal. There's a lot of little wires and things here that are delicate. This portion here is magnesium. This this is brittle. It, it'll bust to pieces. So putting anything on top of the engine and expecting it to jack up, very, very bad idea. Something's going to be damaged. It's just, yeah, that's not a good idea, so we're not going to get into that. I was told that these carburetors are never going to fit. There's no way you can get these to fit. There's a few people that said that. A couple of negative Nancys. While well, you're looking at it, they're in here. What did I do? You know, wow. This was so hard. <laughs> I spent about an hour out here getting this thing bent back into shape, so that way it's it's more you know to the stock proportions that it should have been, because of the damage that had been done to it. Still have to fix the rust, by the way, but that's another story for another time. But obviously, they fit, and they fit just fine. Too much work. Well, like I said, I put about an hour into it, and now they fit, and there's plenty of clearance in it. Some people said, you know, you should, and you know, I fucking hate that. I fucking hate when people tell me you should anything. I'll do it the way I want to do it. It's not because it's it's my property or it's my money, but usually because I'm the one that actually has my hands on it. I'm the one who's doing the work. I'm the one that's got the experience here. You know, you can only tell so much from watching a video, but when you actually have the hands-on experience and you can see this thing from 360 degrees, and you've touched it and you've worked on it before, there's nobody that's going to be able to tell me how to do it more than me so we're gonna do it my way <laughs> typically I, I make a wise decision and I usually get it right the first time and, and in this case you know case in point as I said when I was doing the work on here to, to bend this flange you wouldn't believe how hard it was to get this metal to bend I made a special hook and I lifted the back of the car up by the flange and it had to, the back wheels were off the ground by only about an inch or two and I was bouncing on the back of the car until finally the flange would start to give and it would start to bend and then I would just move over a little bit a few more inches and, and hit it again and get a, the thing to bend and, and the flange came up and I was thinking roughly half an inch is all I really needed and, and that actually is what planed off the floor when I put a straight edge across this thing it's, it's, it's pretty straight but I needed about that half inch in here to, to make that work properly and, and it seemed to do the job now one thing that nobody else had suggested and it probably would have been the most ideal suggestion at all. And I don't know why nobody else ever thought of it. I was hoping that somebody would make <laughs> this call. But these filter elements that are in here, you can buy shorter ones, you know? So you can always compress these suckers down lower by just getting a shorter filter element. And I, and I discovered there is one step smaller than this. It gives you about an extra quarter of an inch. And a quarter of an inch is huge for, for just how tight everything was in here. It wouldn't have cleared the lip. I could have put it in, I probably could have closed the lid on it, but it still would have been up against the uh, the sheet metal, and the vibration is going to cause it to tap. But now at this point, with how everything is, is fits so nicely, I could actually put the uh, the lower profile filters in there and put the lids back on and have you know a little extra clearance around it, which I like that idea, because that engine is going to move, it is going to flex, and as those transmission mounts do get older, this motor is going to move a lot more. But the filters are actually the same size with a shorter profile, actually for an Indian motorcycle. I did a little cross-reference to find out the size and dimensions of these filters and what else they would work on. And there's actually a very specific Indian motorcycle filter that's a quarter of an inch shorter. So um, I'll probably get a set of those down the road. First, I'm going to get this thing tuned, going to get it running, and see if there's any vibrating or any tapping. I'm going to check the aluminum and see if there's any marks on it. And if there is, then for certain, I'll upgrade to those filters. Now, the filters, the dealer cost is, is almost 100 bucks each. Way too friggin' much. <laughs> Way too friggin' much. I found them online for about 60 or $70 each. 
still way too much. So I went and looked up at a K&N to see if they had an equivalent filter of that size, and sure enough, they do. And they're roughly $35 a piece. That's still kind of expensive, but as far as K&N standards are concerned, that, that's that's pretty average. But the good thing is, is they're washable filters. You take them off, you wash them, you put them back on, and they should last me the lifetime of the vehicle unless I get them ruined somehow. So I'm probably going to look into that if I have any problems with uh, any vibration or hitting of the body. All in all, I'm quite satisfied with the way this turned out. Uh, yes, the hatch will actually bloop, fit right in there and close up just fine. So uh, everything in here is actually working out quite well, but I still have to cut up this tailgate and replace this rust, which is one of the reasons why I'm not too worried about this area just yet. But this will be a future video where I start cutting this and pulling this all apart, and then I straighten out the tailgate. So I think that should about sum up this project here. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to release a video where I'm going to be doing the carburetor synchronization and the, and the, finaling, um, the final installation of these carburetors. I have to hook up the vacuum lines yet and then the balance tube and the throttle cable and the fuel lines. You know, all the little stupid things. Oh, in addition, where the wing nuts go, right through here. Once these studs are in place, it is impossible to put those lids on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the wing nut and s screw it on and weld it on at the top. So that way I can actually unscrew the entire stud and take it out of the air cleaner that way. I think that'll just make everything much easier to work with. Like I said, there's planes flying over because the wind is blowing that way again. Okay, uh, yeah, I think that about sums it up. So don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly down there you see below next to the subscribe button. And uh, make sure you check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage on the Facebook group page. I hope that answers some of the questions that people have been asking about both this and the 1776 engine. And uh, will I upgrade a 1776 engine here someday? Oh, I don't know, maybe. I'm quite satisfied with the way this one drives, and I believe it's just a stock 1600. Now, I don't know for certain. I do know that the block that's in here is not original to this car because it's a dual relief, and I didn't have that in 68. So somebody actually has changed this block out at some point, which tells me the engine could be anything. I have no idea what's inside this engine, but I, I will say one thing, that it is, it is strong. And I have had it up to 100 miles an hour before, so it goes pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.